Hey guys, this is Insidious. Welcome to another episode. This video is going to explore the, the basics of the fence. So I'm going to go through each different defensive building type and simply explain what they do and where a good position for them is. Um, I'm going to mention a few things which I've mentioned in previous videos, just in case viewers jump straight to this video. So just be a bit patient if uh, you've already if you already know some of that information. So the first thing is loopholes. Loopholes are areas in your castle where troops can be summoned, but where they really shouldn't be. So if I select the building and then I click anywhere else on the screen, you can see this green aura appear. Now fortunately, it's not appear it's only appearing in places where it should be. But sometimes if you haven't designed your castle well, it may appear in the middle of your layout. For example, if I move this beam zimmer down here and click off it, you can see that green aura appear in the middle. Now that's what you what's called a loophole and is basically where you have at least two empty spaces next to each other. Uh, so in that case it would allow the attacking troops to go straight past my early defences. Now the the next thing that's useful to know is to gain a victory over a castle in player versus player mode, this isn't in war mode, but player versus player, you only need to destroy 40% of the defending castle's buildings. Now, that's, that's not actually very much, especially if you consider that Many players will put their resource buildings right on the bottom level. You can see on the bottom level it has an hourly input of 200%. On this level 150, on this level 100. And if we go way up here, on that level just 50%. So, when it comes to placing your resource buildings, I personally would put just one or two on the bottom level. Um, otherwise, you get what what I do is, if a player has them all on the bottom level, I'll just destroy all of them. And then, if their defensive layout is really strong, I might just quit the battle, because I would have destroyed, normally, at least 40% of their buildings from just destroying the resource buildings. And by quitting the battle, I would have got often a decent amount of loot, I might get a bloodstone, and I'll get the experience points for my heroes. So, you know, that's a, that's a big reason why it's not good to put all your resource buildings on the bottom level. To get a two-star victory, you need to destroy 80% of the defender's buildings, and three stars is 100%, which is what you need to gain a victory during the a battle in the tourney wars so that's something a bit different and we can go into that into a later video the next thing is your throne when you're upgrading it just be wary especially if you're a younger player that it will increase the size of your castle either by one space in width or one row in height or even both so make sure you time it so that when it finishes you're online, otherwise you're going to be left with multiple loopholes um, which will make you very easy to defeat, especially if that castle layout is designated to the castle layout to be used during a war and you, you happen to become part of the defensive lineup. You know, that's a big no-no. Um, the next thing I'm going to go into are the towers. A big plus of Monster Castle are the towers, I think. You know, I'm, I'm just a big fan of of the different types and 
um, how different each one is. So the first one I'm going to mention are the cannons. These are quite useful, particularly against orcs. The problem is they, they're quite hard, um, it's quite hard to hit troops with them, especially if they're fast moving. So what I would recommend is that you position them. You can see I've just selected mine. Red is the areas it can't hit and green is the areas it can hit. So you can see I've got, I've got this what I call the lane of pain at the beginning of my castle. And it's basically three tar pits. Tar pits will slow down the movement of troops. And three spike pits. Spike pits will just nibble at them and take off a bit of health. And then a circular saw. You need to be a higher level to get the circular saw. And this, this is great when placed next to tar pits because it basically moves all along this green area and just mows the troops down. So the longer that they're within that green area, the more health will be taken off them. Um, and also by putting your cannons within range of the lane of pain, then you're going to hit all the troops coming down it. And every single troop that attacks your castle has to go through this lane. So that's quite good. It covers the tar pits, spike pits, circular saw and the cannons. Again, you can see I've put another tower above that lane, the beam zimmer. I'm pretty sure it should be called a zimmer beam. Um, and that's within range of most of the lane. And it's also within range of this point. That point there is what is called a choke point. So a choke point is a point in your castle where troops become trapped. And by being trapped there, you can focus a lot of firepower on that point. So normally the way you construct the choke point is to use a barricade. I've got a lot of orcs on that level, so I'm just going to give an example down here. You have a barricade, you then have normally a guillotine, sometimes players use a circular saw, but as I mentioned, I prefer to use them on the, on the lane. Um, um, yeah, and then sometimes you will see, I'll grab another, another barricade. Sometimes you'll see something like this. So basically the troops that enter that point there are trapped in between these two barricades. And then you can position your defensive towers above that choke point. So whilst they're trapped, they're getting hit by the defensive towers. So this is one type of choke point where you have two barricades. And it's typically put in the middle of a level. Um, and then what you might see is a sentry station and a hero throne put either side of it. Now, I'll just quickly mention a sentry station is really useful as it allows you to put troops inside the sentry station. And once an attacking troop enters the same level that the sentry station is on, the troops that are inside the sentry station will come out. Um, I've got my orcs leveled up to quite a high level. And because they only take one... Um, one amount of space, you can fit five to six troops in a sentry station. You can actually get a decent amount of orcs in that sentry station. So another type of choke point is, I'll just show it here. If players come up this staircase, if I put this guillotine here, I can then put a choke point there. Sorry, a barricade there. Now, I, this is good because I've essentially had to use only one barricade to create that choke point. And then typically what you'll see is players will put the hero throne, maybe say there, and the sentry station there. This is quite good and it's something I did for a long time. 
until I attacked one player and um, found it quite hard to, to get through his choke points. And what he'd done is he had he had basically done this. Let me just show you something like this, where you come up the ladder, the staircase, and immediately the attacking troops will go for the barricade. That's the thing that they'll destroy. Then the troops that come out of this sentry station will hit the attacking troops from behind. And the hero will hit the attacking troops from the front. So what you're doing is once those attacking troops destroy the barricade, they will attack either the hero or the troops in the sentry station. But they can't hit both at the same time. So if you imagine you're getting attacked by let's say a pharaoh who's using his special skill sandstorm that sandstorm is only going to hit either the troops in the sentry station or the hero but not both at the same time now that in my opinion is a massive advantage and that's why that's what i do in my choke points so i'll just put those buildings back uh, so that one goes there now just be advised that the training room has, well at least in my castle, it has the highest amount of health points, if you click on info. It has 2020 plus a bonus of almost 300 because of my Dr. Watt, he has a skill called engineering. Now that's actually pretty good. So I, by positioning it next to the guillotine, it, in effect, becomes a bit like a barricade. Yes, it doesn't have the same amount of health points, but it has. it's a bit like a mini barricade, let's say. So that, that's a very useful tip to follow. The next thing that I'd like to go into are spring traps. So... Or actually, before I go into that, it's good to quickly mention barricades are easily destroyed by pumpkin bombs. So another huge advantage of putting the lane of pain at the beginning of the your defensive layout is that the pumpkin bombs, it's highly unlikely that they're going to get through this lane. And if they do, by the time they reach this point, either the guillotine will finish them off or the crossbow will or the Zimmer beam will. So, yeah, again, that, that's a really big plus of putting the lane of pain at the beginning of the castle. So the next thing, spring traps. These are just the, mo the deadliest, most annoying things in the world. The amount of times I've had my hero pop by one, even when I'm using goblins, is just unbelievable. So... Let's just find, that's, that's a spring trap. So, yeah. Um, now, spring traps are, it's useful to use goblins to, to activate the spring trap. Um, so, but goblins will always run towards your resource buildings. Um, so therefore, if you don't want your spring trap to be activated by a goblin, don't put it on the same level as the resource building. You know, that simple. Uh, what else? The uh, And it's good to put your spring traps after a defensive strong point, um, as in a chokehold, because a, cho a chokehold is by nature quite hard to get through so it will basically force a player to commit a large number of troops to get through it therefore if you put the spring trap after the choke point it's much more likely that you're going to catch a lot more troops than if you put it before the choke point the next thing i'd like to mention are stairs if you're a lower level player you might not be able to build a, ro a rolling stone yet. In that case, I would recommend you position your stairs all above one another, 
So I'm just going to position three above each other. But if you uh, if you're playing this, just or, yeah, just put them all above each other like this until you get right to the throne. The reason for this is oh, I'm messing up my castle layout now. Uh, I'll, do, I'll do it later. Um, the the reason for this is that imagine, let's say, I have a ladder here and a ladder here. Let's say I put this resource building here. Let's say this second level is just filled with buildings like this. Now, if a troop is attacking that level, they're going to start at this point. Oh, here come the orcs. And they're going to walk all along the level, destroying each building one at a time. Then when they get to the end, they're going to have to walk all the way back to this staircase. Effectively, that means that they've walked the entire length of the level twice. Now, if you do that for every single level of your castle, by the time they get to the throne, that timer, which limits the the time that the, that the battle can run for, it's going to be really hard for them to destroy the throne before the timer runs out. Which brings me on to the next point. If you're... I would say maybe a low low level 30s player. You're probably going to find it quite tough to defend against orcs. I mean, I still do to be honest, but I do win a fair few these days because my my defensive heroes are really high level now. I've got a lava lord level 50 and a pharaoh level 50 each with a dread badge. Um but if you if you can't rely on your heroes and the strength of your buildings to defend against orcs or any other troop type for that matter I think it's quite good to put your throne quite high up in the castle um, you know it could be say up here for example and you can see in my older videos that's that's where I have the hero throne now in in this video you can see in this castle layout I've got it lower down um, and that's because as you develop as a player, you'll start attacking and getting attacked by stronger players. And um, these stronger players typically begin to experiment a bit with goblins and ghosts. And uh, if you have your throne quite far away, it's going to make it quite easy for, for the, your castle to be defeated with goblins and ghosts. So that's something we'll go into in later videos. Um, but for now, all you need to know is that if you, if you're a lower level player, yeah, just put the throne higher up, put your staircases above one another. Um, but if you think you, you're quite strong defensively, I would recommend you put the throne a bit lower, um, so that it's protected with more defensive towers and it's on the same level as your sentry station, your uh, at least one hero throne, some barricades, choke points, etc. Just to make it really hard for those those pesky little goblins and ghosts to destroy the throne. Um, I think it should be noted that in Monster Castle, I think it's a lot harder to defend than to attack. And I think no matter how good your defense is, if a player wants to destroy your castle and and they're half decent enough, they can do because they can basically use mana. But when you're defending, you can't use mana. You know, and that's the big plus of attacking over defending. Um, now the next thing I want to mention is the Dragon Tower. If you don't know already, I think most players will though, the Dragon Tower, when the when an attacking troop walks past the dragon tower, dragon tower, it activates the dragon, who will then breathe fire all along the same level that the, dra the dragon tower is positioned on. Now, it kind of makes me laugh because if I put, let's say I have the dragon tower here, next to the staircase, which is leading to the next level, 
let's say I've got a bunch of orcs. By the time the orc hits the dragon tower, he's by the time the dragon reaches the castle and starts to breathe fire on the level, most of the orcs are going to be on the level above. You know, this this always happens, and it, it it's just it's just ridiculous. In the same way, if you put the dragon tower at the beginning of the level. By the time the dragon reaches the level, you might only have a handful of troops who have walked from the level below, where the staircase is, to the level above, where the dragon tower is. So, it's good to just put the dragon tower somewhere in the middle, or as close to the middle of the level as you can get it. Wow, I really messed up my layout now. Um, that's fine, I can remember it. If you are... A high enough level to build a rolling stone. The rolling stone will basically roll down the level and then down the staircase, then it will roll down the level to the next staircase and so on. So in that case you might want to start alternating your staircases um, or staggering them like I've done. Otherwise what's going to happen is the rolling stone is just going to drop straight down all your staircases if they're one above the other and they're not going to actually squash anything unless you've got troops who happen to be walking up the staircase but um, that would just be a coincidence and is that's highly unlikely the next thing are dynamites a bit like spring traps you you don't want them to be activated by goblins so it's good not to put them on the same level as your resource buildings. Um, yes. Now, what else do you need to know? Ah, and one thing that I should have mentioned probably a bit earlier is it's good to space your defensive towers. Don't bunch them all up together like this for example because when a player attacks you they're going to look for the bunched up towers and they're going to hit them with a lightning strike. So if I hit that crossbow with a lightning strike it's going to damage the magic terrace and the crossbow either side of it. But if I space them, just put one space in between each of them, it's not going to damage those towers either side of it. So just be wary of bunching them up together. Um, also space your buildings a little bit from one another. Not like how this is shown now but how my castle layout was at the beginning of the video because then it's going to make it harder for the attacking player to predict where your um, your spring trap or, or dynamite is or even your rolling stone. Because if they're all bunched up together the player's just going to see one or two gaps and is going to automatically know that's where the booby trap is. And they're just going to trigger them with a goblin or even um, some magic. Now, I'm not going to show a video like an example of me being attacked in this video. But rather what I'm going to do is, once I have the videos, I'm going to show a series of hyperlinks. Um, which you can click below. If they're not up, it's because I haven't made the videos yet. And they're going to explain and show examples of me being attacked first by orcs, then by mainly goblins, probably with a few orcs, um, then by bats, and then by ghosts, uh, and finally by... Uh, summon skeletons and and of course the dragon so in each of those videos I'm just going to explain how you can basically tweak this defensive layout to suit each different troop type because I personally think there isn't one single ideal defensive layout that can defend against every different troop type you know and in that respect I give props to to the, to the developers of Monster Castle because that just reflects that this game does have quite a good amount of depth. Um, so yeah, I think that 
covers just about everything. So, yeah, stay tuned for the next couple of videos. Um, and if you, if you have any comments or think that there's anything that could be improved upon, uh, just please leave a comment below. And if you would like to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. More subscribers are always welcome. In which case, just click the subscribe button below. Okay, I uh, wish you a good day and peace out. Bye.